lot, as long as you're not fixated on the tradition, but the taste itself. So we will analyze two spectrums, the ingredients and the cooking time and timings, which don't worry, I will explain in a moment what that means. And at the end, I'll give you an extra one. For the ingredients, when answering the question, like how much can you change the ingredients in a recipe, I usually consider three things. Let's go on the first one. Spot and address the pillars. With this, I'm referring to the, the five pillars I gave you, which are basically salt, fat, umami, sweet and acidity. So if for example a recipe does not include uh, an acidic component, you may as well add it, okay? This is what I do usually with eggs. When I cook uh, scrambled eggs, I usually add some vinegar, okay? Because the eggs, you know, I may use butter and salt, and we have saltiness and fattiness, but the, the whole other things are missing, like there are three things missing, which are sweetness, umami and acidity. So a quick way I add umami is by adding some broth powder. You know, I, I may sound crazy like at the moment, like, what, you add broth powder to your eggs? Yes, I do. And it tastes amazing. And I also add some vinegar, especially the rice vinegar. For some reason, I hate the apple cider vinegar. For some, I, I just dislike the, the, the smell. So basically, just like read the recipe and try to, to translate those ingredients into pillars. Like, what do they actually mean? Are they acidic are the umami which umami for those of you who don't know is basically savoriness is that ingredient sweet salty fatty okay you, you get the point like try to find the the weak point and enhance that to give you a practical example so i, I don't really know if the original recipe of the tortilla which is a, a spanish typical dish has the onions but you know if, if if you didn't have the onions i would add them the same way i add onions in the pasta la carbonara so that's one thing. The second is spot the outliers. In today's world, we have the most unhealthy foods we could ever imagine. And the thing is that they made their way into a traditional recipe, okay? I'm talking here about seed oils mainly, okay? If you think about it, uh, go buy a mayonnaise, or maybe you go to a restaurant and they give you mayonnaise. Read the ingredients, it's fucking soybean oil or some weird seed oil. And holy shit, I was correct, I didn't expect it to be so influential but i just checked a few recipes on the internet and they were all asking to use vegetable oil that's crazy wow so the main outliers are seed oils oops some sweetness and you know you get the picture when you know something is unhealthy you substitute it look if you want to make mayonnaise for real like don't use it uh, don't buy it or use seed oils you can search on youtube master chef australia okay australia okay not fucking Eng they're on on england they are fucking chaotic as fuck uh, search, <laughs> search up, uh, yeah, MasterChef Australia mayonnaise. It should be the first video. Basically, this this very chill guy explaining you how you can basically make mayonnaise with a standard home mixer, and it looks very good. Obviously, you will use uh, your fat of choice, so you can use olive oil, for example. So the last point with the ingredients I will make is adapt to your ingredients. Very simple, if a recipe says use shallots and you don't have them, use onions. Practically the same thing if you're just like a normal human trying to eat healthy. A recipe requires three tomatoes, but wait, I don't have tomatoes. Well, no problem, I will use bell peppers. Funny thing is that often, by changing an original ingredient, you end up with a better version of the original recipe, or at least more satisfying, okay? So I'll give you an example here. When I started cooking by myself, I was basically doing chicken curry. I love this dish, it's so fucking good. And one day I, I was I started to make it. Basically the, the I'll give you a quick idea. Basically to make that you have to stir fry onions, then add tomatoes, then add chicken and curry and salt and all those spices. And that's like the, the core of the recipe. Now I started stir frying the onions. When I went to check if I had tomatoes, which I should have done before, I realized I was out of tomatoes. So what I did was basically uh, search in the fridge and I found like, the closest thing I found was bell peppers which by the way like in terms of the five pillars they are kind of similar maybe like the bell peppers are a bit sweeter and tomatoes may have a little bit more acidity and umami but they are quite similar okay so I looked at it and was like okay let's try to use bell peppers I know it's gonna turn out bad but let's try it anyway so I did the same thing I did with tomatoes chopped them and uh, let them cook bro it was better or at least I liked it more Okay, you may say this is not the original chicken curry recipe and I should go to hell because I've used bell peppers and not tomatoes which are the foundation, okay? Bro, I don't give a fuck. It was better. Let's not, maybe let's not call it chicken curry. Let's call it chicken Federico Fusco. 
but you get the point. I was more satisfied by eating chicken curry with bell peppers. But how far can you go with this? Well, that is up to you. Me personally, I go very far. I don't care if a recipe is asking me to use pork. If I don't have it, I will use chicken or beef. You can literally change every ingredient. You may not have the, 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 the original outcome you desired, but it's still gonna be probably good, okay? That's the thing. And remember, by like many times, by changing an ingredient, you end up with a better meal than if you use the intended ingredient. Okay, I'm so fucking stupid. I don't know why I forgot to take this into account, but I forgot to mention, like I forgot to actually record the most important thing and that's actually the proportions so i'm referring to the to the amount like to the you know uh, use three tomatoes and uh, three onions okay you can actually use double of the onions so you can vary the proportions of the ingredients and it will not change that much we will go back once again to the chicken curry recipe and simply put the recipe i was following i will link a little i will leave a link in the description if you want it was not that clear when saying the amount of tomatoes because it was like four tomatoes chopped but i was like how big are the tomatoes because it showed the chopped matter only it didn't show the the tomatoes so i always try to keep the same ratio like the tomatoes had to be the double of the onions but eventually uh, one day i i didn't have enough tomatoes so i will use less some some day i will use more and guess what it was the same so yeah do not stress too much about proportions that is really you, you gotta drill this into your brain because this is really important and many people believe this is that very important thing while it is not don't believe me try it yourself whenever you're making a recipe try using a different amount of ingredients and you will see that the result is kind of similar if not the same okay so we we did the ingredients now let's go for the timing okay so with timing i mean the order in which you cook the food and the cooking time itself so how much can you vary okay the cooking time and most importantly how much can you change the order in which you place the ingredients in the heat source meaning can i put uh, the meat before the vegetables or vice versa can i uh, do i do i have to do it in the intended way so first like see the meat and then uh, use the, the the vegetables and only then you can add the broth and then you can add the the, the seasonings the salt and then you know the, the order in which you add the ingredients together so short answer a lot as long as you don't care about the texture and you don't care about it being different from the original recipe long answer it depends on the cooking method and the food itself so the order in which you cook them first steam the veggies then add the meat you can add the spices now wait 30 minutes so it, it steams well now you can add the liquid now you can add the salt and you can bro shut up it's not that deep i hate it when people are convinced that the only way to make that recipe is by following a precise order. So I'll bring out the, the chicken curry once, once again, because that, that was kind of a, a training camp for me. So um, the first time I did it, I basically looked up on the phone for um, chicken curry recipe. It was like some uh, Indian girl, like traditional curry recipe or shit. And I followed the, the recipe step by step. You know, it was asking me to stir fry the onions until they are golden, then the, add tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, and uh, then wait for them to break up, then add curry, uh, garlic, some ginger, some uh, any spice, I don't know, fucking everything. Then let it cook for a, for a little, like five minutes more. Then add the, the chicken, add the salt on top. Bro, a whole mess of precise steps, okay? And then you could, uh, you basically had to cook the, the chicken a bit, and then you could add the, the milk and then cover it, then uncover it for another 20 minutes. Bro, it was so intrigated intrigued and the thing is that whenever i wanted to make the recipe i always forgot about it so i would always have to check on the phone uh, the steps okay one day though i was i don't know i didn't really want to to search the, the recipe because it was a bit a, a, a bit annoying so what i did was like okay let's throw the phone away and tr let's try to recreate the recipe as I remember it. Turns out I completely did it wrong, okay? I, I didn't do it the, the right way. But I still liked it. You see, from there is where I started experimenting more with the timings. So like I will cook the onions a bit, I will put the tomatoes in, I will also put the the, the care sorry the, the chicken at the same time and at the same time I will put the spices without a specific order and waiting the specific minutes. I will cover it up as soon as possible and I will let it cook very easy. 
or maybe I will also add the, the milk together with the, the chicken and everything. By the way, I was not basically timing the ingredients, so I was not waiting the intended amount of minutes between the ingredient insertion. I don't know how to fucking say that, but you get the point. And every time, like every time, it was good, it was fine, and I was saving a lot of effort, a lot of mental effort. And that was shocking to me, because the end result was not bad, it was the same. But obviously there are recipes that allow you to do this, and recipes that don't. This thing though does not depend on the recipe, but on the cooking method. So let's go over the three main ones, and how they are forgiving. So, boiling. If you know this, I made a video about it. And boiling is the most forgiving cooking method. Meaning that as long as you have the water in there, you can't really burn it. And that's the thing, like, the, uh, the burning is the problem, okay? When you are trying to change the timings, the only thing that should scare you is if I do the timing wrong, I will burn the food, okay? That's your main concern. So by boiling, which by the way, when I was doing chicken curry, it was kind of a semi-boil, because I, I was using tomatoes, so like, tomatoes are water, basically water. And when you cook things in tomato sauce, you are cooking them in water, so like, you are kind of boiling them. That's the thing. That's why it was forgiving. So yeah, with boiling there is no really actual set of rules that you have to follow. You can just put everything together, like the, the old way of cooking things, okay, in the like, caveman days when they had like pots and they could cook the things in, uh, in water. They would just take whatever they had, like literally any edible thing, put it into the pot and boil it. That's called broth. I think that's the oldest recipe, that's, that's the oldest way to cook. I recorded a video on like how to boil, like a caveman, if you want to say it like that. But basically, you can just add everything together at the same time without stressing about the cooking temperature and timings. Because here is the thing, look, um, for example, there is a recipe okay, in, my, in my country, I don't know, it's, it's called bollito, and uh, it means boiled, okay, literally boiled. And what you do is take a piece of meat, some vegetables, which, which usually are carrots, onions, and celery, and you just add them together in a big pot, add water, and let it cook like and at low heat for three hours or something. What you can do is add potatoes. The problem with potatoes is that you cannot add them at the same time of the of the meat. You can't because they will melt. They cooking around 30 minutes or something. So you cannot just plot the potato at the same time of the vegetables and meat because they will have to cook for a long time and potatoes will disintegrate while the other ingredients are just cooking. But what if that happens? Would you care? Because to be honest, to me, having a broth with some starch dissolved in it is not that bad. How much are you willing to differentiate yourself from the traditional recipe because the traditional recipe does not say that you should have a potato starchy broth but if i want to just put everything together and that's the consequence so be it okay i don't give a fuck to be honest i've never done it but if that ever happens i will not be so bothered and that's very powerful if you have this mindset because you will be able to cook something effortlessly and still enjoy it so if you use the oven which is the other method i think you can play around with timings I don't think you have to be as precise. Maybe like, yes, boiling is maybe more forgiving. But even the oven is not that bad. People believe that you have to be super careful about the time. You know, you read the box and it says 200 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes and then turn them out. Bro, it's not that deep. Whenever, when I started using the oven, I was so scared of messing up the temperatures. I thought that if you didn't set up the temperature and time right, you would end up with a fucking mess in the kitchen and... Uh, a fucked up end product. But what I discovered instead is that basically whatever temperature and time you use is gonna be fine. It's gonna turn out fine. Okay. Even the, the, the setting, you know, the convection or the, the you know the grills. One day I was like I was with my father and him and he was cooking the a tray of vegetables with potatoes and you know, a very easy recipe to do, you know, just cut some potatoes and some vegetables and put that in a tray, cover with some oil, and he, he was like, uh, hey Fede, can, can you like help me, like, I, I have to go out now, can you like put the tray in when the, the oven is preheated, like when the oven is reached the temperature, and I was like, why do you have to wait for the oven to be at the right temperature, you, you can just put the tray in, it's not gonna change anything, it's not like if you put it before the preheating temperature, it will cook unevenly, bro, it's just hot air, it's not that deep, so I was like, no, you, you can just put it now and forget about it so yeah that's that stir frying well to be honest here the time intervals are not usually sp are not usually special are not usually special are not usually specified in the recipes usually they will say like stir fry until golden they will not say stir fry until 10 uh, 
for 10 minutes. So I, I, don't, I don't think I can give you any advice here. You know, but just be careful about when you're just frying because that's the easiest method you can burn your food with. Obviously, depending on the ingredient you use. This is true for all the three methods I just went over. Depending on the ingredient you're cooking, it will be easier to burn. For example, if you use spices. Actually, I, I made a graph I will show you now. Simply put, the more the eye is open, the more you have to be careful when cooking it because it has a higher risk to burn. So green eye, forget about it. Yellow, just check on it once in a while. And red eye, you know, just check on it more often. The reason potatoes are like in the yellow spot is because usually when you cook potatoes in the oven, you cut them very finely and that can result in a higher risk to burn them. While if you overcook bread, you will just get croutons. So to summarize this segment, ask yourself, what will happen if I don't follow the same order? Can you still eat that? Regardless of the texture, which obviously if you don't follow the same order may change, okay? Okay, now for the extra one, which is how much can you vary the method? The method is something like the processing of the ingredients. For example, you know, peeling potatoes, cutting an onion finely, rinsing the potato with water to remove the starches, or mix this thing in a certain way. Okay, bro, this is so annoying. This is so useless. Actually useless. I, I get so upset when someone is peeling potatoes. Like, why are you peeling potatoes? Like... Jesus Christ, it's like the best part when you bake them. And it's not only better with the pills, it is also ex extremely annoying to peel them. I once uh, was, helping, was helping my mother and I, I cut a, a fingernail, it was so annoying. Ugh. Never want to have anything like that. So, no, I'm never peeling potatoes again. They're actually not that bad. Even if you are making a soup and they end up in your soup, is it really annoying to have some small, thin peel? In your soup? I don't think so, it's not that bad. I'm not bothered by some potato skin, okay? It's fine. It also has some nutrients, probably. It's probably it's like the most nutrient dense part of the potato. But you, know, you, you get a point. Um, cutting the onion fine, like cutting the ve vegetables in a certain way. But let's go back for a, a second to the curry, the chicken curry recipe. So it was like, uh, yes, cut the tomatoes, chop them in cubes, and then add them to the, to the onions. Bro, you know how we do it now? If they are like small tomatoes, I just cut them in half and add them. If they are big tomatoes, I just cut them in like two pieces, eight pieces, four pieces, you decide, and add them. Because eventually they will melt by themselves. You don't need to chop them very finely. Obviously, if you are making a salad, you cannot have chunky pieces, like enormous pieces that you cannot fit in your mouth, obviously. You can maybe chop them in that case, but if you are cooking them, so they will probably eventually melt, you don't really need to chop them. Then there is the, the rinse the potatoes to make the starches go away. Bro, I see many people like doing this dogmatically, like that. that's the, the only way to, to cook potatoes bro never like n i've never rinsed them always ate great potatoes yeah well i mean i've also ate uh you know rinsed potatoes but they are kind of the same okay okay editor here and uh, i was right i just uh, did a quick research and there is this very good video that is testing the the two methods and it was actually proving what i was saying so yeah if you want to check it out i'll leave a link in the description so last thing utensils and cookware okay i don't like using fancy equipments to cut at an onion okay I will just use a knife, like a simple table knife, not even a professional knife. And maybe you can say that I'm, I'm a little bit too extreme when not using a, a cutting board. You know, fine, if you want to use it, uh, fine, it's not that bad, like, that is fine. But bro, like, if a recipe is requiring to use a, a garlic press, okay, and I don't have it, or I just don't want to use it, like, even if I had it, it's just so annoying to use, and, like, many times it doesn't even work, and then you have to clean it, it's some fucking mess so when that happens i usually a don't use garlic or two just chop it finely another thing i hate is when recipes ask you to use multiple pans and pots so what i usually do is just like use only one even when the recipe usually like requires you to use two pans for some reason i will just use one and do everything in that so if you want to understand what i'm talking about like there, there is this video from this guy it's called adam Rogueza. If you search up on, on uh, YouTube, Adam, Adam Ragueza Macarons, okay, it's a very cool video, I love that video. It was the introduction to, you know, cooking in a more careless way. And basically what I'm doing here is what he did there, but I'm doing it on all the cooking spectrum, not only on pastry. So go watch that video, it's fucking hilarious, it's, it's so good, I will leave a link in the description. And yeah, to end this video I will just say that this video is a bit of an excuse for the few people that are a bit curious to experiment with food, but they are held back by dogmatic beliefs made up by culture. Look, what I tell you is feel free to experiment and if someone is after you for disrespecting a recipe, blame it on me. I take full responsibility. Matter of facts, I will try to upload within tomorrow 
um, a recipe which basically is the you know the spaghetti da carbonara but but changing some ingredient and using only one pen okay 